You know, there's a scripture that says, To you, O hair of prayer, all people will come. And, you know, I was thinking of um, what Jesus says, you know, about those that are giving the, the spiritual food at the proper time. He said, Blessed is that man that when, when I, I, I come, find him doing so. So we, this is not the time to slow down in our ministry. But, you know, I was thinking I would preach every day to people if I knew people were listening. And I might try to do that, you know, just keep putting these videos out because we need encouragement now. And I, would have to, and I was thinking, well, I would like it to have something like a radio program. Now, that can be very expensive. But, you know, I had a radio program back around the year 2000. And um, it was a little expensive for me at that time. And I didn't have much money at all. I, in fact, I was... Uh, using money that I was supposed to have for food for the radio program, and it got really tight for me, which I, which I shouldn't do, you know. But um, the I I one of my last programs, I asked people, okay, now I'm I'm uh, uh, cause I asked them, you know, for if you have any financial assistance you can provide, it'd be really appreciated. But I but the last radio programs, I say, okay, just let me know if there's anybody out there that's listening. Could you just, I gave my email, could you just give me an email just to lo know that I'm reaching somebody? And I didn't get any emails, you see. So then I just let, well, okay, then I'll just forget about the radio program. But this, see, and on BitChute, which is the only place I can, well, maybe I'll try YouTube too, I don't know. But BitChute seems to be the only place you can really have freedom of speech, you know. So I'm going to try to keep putting these out all the time because... Blessed is that servant when I am arriving, I find him doing so. So I want to be right there with you. And I think I, I think love is the most important thing. And I want to preach more about love, you know. Those who need love are the ones that show love the most. And there's these other people that think, oh, that's, that's because you're suffering so much. But me, I have it easy. And... Uh, I can't show you a lot of love, but whatever little love I show you, you should appreciate it because I'm, I'm better than you. You see, because you're suffering, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm sitting high and you're low, so you should really appreciate my any help I give you. Well, that, but that's not the truth, you see, because those people they don't, they never understand, they never have empathy for the real disciples of Jesus Christ who are suffering. Because they, they were suffering, then they would love you. Remember Jesus says, if you were from God, you would love me. Because I came from God. But those that aren't from God, they didn't love him. And he says, that's because you're not in my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. And they'll follow me. And they're not going to follow any voice of the stranger. Because they don't know the voice of stranger. But they know the voice of love. Because God is love. And they know the voice of sincerity and, um, you know, <clears throat> I can't say anything to, to qualify myself. I can, only, I can only speak the words of God and, and ask for God's spirit to have whatever he wants to show to come out, you know. And it's all according to his spirit. There's nothing we can do. We can pray for his spirit. We can pray for his love. You see, even if I don't have anyone in the world, just like Jesus didn't have anyone in the world when he was up on that stake, that tree, it says he was, you know, impaled on that tree, the wooden, whatever it was, a stake or cross beams on it, we don't know for sure. But Jesus says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And all his disciples forsook him. It's a horrible way to die, but God had rewarded him for his faithfulness. And there's that scripture in Isaiah. It says, um, though I have forsaken you just for a moment with everlasting mercies, everlasting love, I will have mercies on you. And, and it's in Isaiah. I forgot the exact chapter, 50-something, I think it is, 4 or 56. But he says, and you, you shall not be ashamed, neither confounded, neither will you remember the shame of your youth. We all do stupid things when we're young, and the shame of the youth. And that has to do with the, 
the blossoming of, uh, you know, um, adolescence and things like that. That's why the, one of the, the qualifications in the Bible for an elder was that they be past the bloom of youth, youth because of the desires that are um, incidental to youth. You know, the fleshly desires because the hormones are going and uh, it's the time to get reproduced, to find a wife. And you really can't turn that off, you see. It's really because God put it in every man. And if we're not interested in that, we have to suffer with it. We have to deal with it. And it's not easy, you know. So we, we do the best we can. <clears throat> and I have assurance that God understands us. Remembers that we're just dust. In other words... We're flesh and blood, you know. So others may condemn us. They might point out, oh, but you did that thing back then, you know. Yeah, during the bloom of youth, you know, where I, where I, where, where I, I, I didn't have complete control over myself. I'm not, I'm not advocating fornication. I'm advocating anything to avoid fornication, you know. But still, you have those hormones, and there has to be some kind of a release or something, you know. Because that's we're just human, you know. That's the facts of the matter. What at least it was with me. I'm okay now. I'm past that. So I don't have any I don't have to deal with that anymore. And that was my main problem when I was young, you know. But anyway, God says that you, you will forget the shame of thy youth. You know, how comforting is that that God can forgive us? We'll do whatever we can not to sin. But it's not like Paul says, you know, the, the things that I didn't want to do is what I did. Why? Because of the sin that resides in my flesh. You know, so God is understanding, but you have to hate it. Hate what is bad. And you have to ask for forgiveness every time. Every time you get out of the way or you start to get out of the way or you begin to stumble, you need to ask for forgiveness right away. You know it. Because you have a conscience, and the conscience will alert you. And you will feel like something is off. Something is not right. You don't feel whole anymore. Like half of you is walking into the wrong way, and you feel like in limbo, kind of a weird thing. Well, that's when you want to pray to God for forgiveness for your sin. You don't want to pursue it. You don't want to pursue that girl. You don't want to pursue it where she's going to take you, because there's a lot of women... As the Bible says, will lead, her footsteps lead to hell. Okay, now so, one of my point was back to that scripture is that everlasting mercies, God, he did, he, you might be forsaken sometimes, or one time, especially um, God wants to test us. He tested Jesus. And it says, for the reward that was held out to Jesus, he endured that torture stake. And now he sits at the right hand of God. And he has immortality. He can never die anymore. And that's amazing. Now, that's something that God is not going to hand out to very many people. Not at all. Well, some people say, well, I am the anointed, and I belong to this organization, and I, I give a nice speech, and... Um, I've fooled a lot of people, you know. Well, that doesn't count with God. God knows who belong to Him, and He's gonna. You have to really go through the ringer, you know. If you don't have the joy of the Lord, that's because you're not suffering. It's because the joy comes through suffering, and God's help through those times. If you're not suffering, then you're not of His. All those, it says, the desire to live with godly devotion will be persecuted and will suffer. If you, have, if, you've had a, if you have an easy life, you're not one of those. Because God says, without a doubt, He scourges everyone that He receives as a son. That means heavy discipline. But we partake of His holiness because of that, you see. So that's the great thing where it leads us to. So I'm going to cut out for today, for this video. And God, God bless you all. Thanks for listening. I pray for you, wherever you are. You're, I pray for the little sheep. Remember Jesus told Peter, you love me? Peter says, of course I love you. Jesus feed my little lambs. Feed my sheep. 
So that's what I'm going to endeavor to do. And uh, I'll have a radio program someday if I can, if I know I got at least a few people listening, you know. And I'd like to share this with as many people as I can, the, the knowledge and the love that God has given to me, because I know there's a lot of distress out there. There's a lot of suicidal thoughts and things like that. Don't do that. Jesus, come to me, all you that are thickly laden and burdened, and I will come and I will refresh your souls, for my burden is light. You know, and, and you will find refreshment for your souls, because I am meek and peaceable, you know. Okay, God bless you all. Contact me anytime you want. I love you all with, with all my heart. I pray for every one of you that you may have eternal life and live forever. To be worthy to escape all the things that are destined to occur and to stand before the Son of Man. And that's, that when I says be worthy, that doesn't mean our own works. That means that the cleanliness that God gives us when He washes our robes white and gives us a new spirit of eternal life that bubbles up from within us. That's how we get... That's how we prove, that's how we're worthy. And it become, but, it be, but that comes out of faithfulness to God, keeping His commandments, and by prayer and dedication. That's how we're found worthy. Not because we're something, we're nothing. Everything, God is everything. And to us belongs nothing. But to God, Jehovah, and His name, everything belongs to Him. God bless you all. Talk to you soon. Call... Talk to me anytime. Take care now.